So hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram and tonight I'm going to be talking about the three biggest Aussie influencer news stories for the week. So in my opinion, these are based on like my subscription, like stuff that I post to people and I get lots of like engagement on posts and these are the three most interesting stories. So the first one is Lily Brown. So this week she has posted herself and Jet on holidays in Paris. So this comes off the back of four weeks, or a few weeks, I think it is. I don't know exactly how many weeks, but a few weeks of filming The Amazing Race in Europe. And the two of them have then tacked on a holiday at the end of that experience. So it seems that what happened was for The Amazing Race, maybe they had to only take a backpack. That's what I'm thinking from what she's said, because she's said that um, her and Jet instead of lugging around four suitcases like they usually would around Europe on a holiday, they've just got a small amount of luggage and instead of taking heaps of stuff with them, they've just been thrift shopping, so op shopping around Europe as they travel. And yeah, it's very interesting because influencers usually base their whole holiday around all their outfits. They're posting different outfits every day. Like if you look at Lily's stories from Paris in contrast to like Georgie Stevenson, for example, Georgie has curated outfits like right down to the accessories every single day of the holiday. Whereas Lily Brown, she's just wearing like a long sleeve black top and she's wearing these very old school sort of like puffer jackets. I've got an example here of one like this. This is the sort of stuff she's wearing on her holiday in Paris. And she's saying herself that the clothes are ugly but she's just wearing what's warm and what's comfy. And yeah, I think that this is a really different thing to see from an influencer and I really like it. I think that there is so much pressure on photos when you go on holidays and so much pressure on your outfit. I know that even as a normal person, I'll often go and buy new clothes to go on holidays because of all the photos. And I mean, you do wanna look and feel your best, of course, but yeah, it was, very interesting to see and yeah I think that that's very cool that they've just been over there filming The Amazing Race. She didn't actually confirm that but Pete Hallier, he's also on their season, he mentioned it in his stories pretty much the same day that Lily posted this stuff. So I think that maybe they all got their social media back on the same day and Lily had said you know sorry I've been MIA for a month, had a bit going on and then posted like a week's worth of stories from Paris and yeah looks like they had a really good time. So that is the update for Lily. The second update for this week is Karina Irby. So she's at it again with her clickbait. She's, I really, really enjoy her as an influencer. She's always got something going on. She's certainly not boring. She went to a cafe this week with her Moana bikini. She's got like a bikini brand. She took some of her team there for like cake and coffee. And during their visit, they decided, they took a professional photographer, like. I guess it might have been a friend or something, but it was someone with like a proper camera and they started taking photos of themselves at the cafe and the cafe owner came to them and said, sorry, like you can't do that at this cafe. And Karina was not pleased. She actually like named the cafe, named and shamed them on her stories. And she's got a very large amount of followers. And she ended up going on to say that there was a neighbor that saw the whole commotion. I think they saw it sounds like they saw it and um, they actually offered their house to Karina and said, come into my house, like do your photo shoot in here. So Karina was happy in the end. She got a really great photo shoot, but it did cause a lot of controversy. It's been picked up by like all the news sites as well. And they've said, like the cafe have said to the news sites, all that was said is that if you have a professional photographer, you need to book a time for a shoot. The cafe owners also noted, this is off news.com.au, that someone of her stature should have known that they would need permission as she has a successful company. She told us she reached out to us and tried to book a time slot, but we are on top of our emails and socials and that never happened. So yeah, that's a bit awkward that she claims that she did try to book, but then she was saying she was mad that they kicked her out so she would have known. I don't know, but yeah, it's it gives a bit of entitlement. Like I can see that it would be really good for the cafe, like good marketing, but it's kind of like if they were to go to her Moana bikini warehouse and set up a coffee cart without permission and just started like selling coffee out of her warehouse, I imagine she would ask them to leave. Like it's the same sort of situation. And there have been quite a few businesses that don't want influencers 
using their premises as impromptu photo shoots like um, the Calisle, Calisle, I think you pronounce it, hotel in Brisbane that's really famous for having like a very strict no commercial use policy for their venue as like photos and video content. And the cafe and the hotel, I believe they've both said it's for the enjoyment of the other patrons. Like other patrons don't want to necessarily be in the background of these videos and photos. And if they get permission, they could do it like outside of hours or, you know, they could fence off a certain area or whatever. So yeah, that's the latest drama with Karina Irby. And then the biggest news story for the week is... Oh, Kate Zepp. Okay, so Chloe Zepp's sister, Kate Zepp, her baby daddy has been in and out of prison for the last few years, probably four years. And yesterday, or in the last week, he has been sentenced to 11 years in prison for attempting to commit a crime. I don't think he actually committed a crime, he just attempted to. So 11 years is a very, very big sentence for that. I'm wondering if like prior convictions might have had something to do with that or prior, not convictions, but like prior involvements, I suppose. So it all started back in 2020. I've got three different news articles here. This first one is from news.com.au. So back in 2020, he was accused of being in within a group of people who kidnapped and tortured a woman so he was accused but he was never convicted i don't believe so he was accused of this crime because apparently there was some tracking device it might have been his mobile i think the police were tracking his mobile and the police were saying that his mobile was tracked as being at that location at that time that this group kidnapped this woman and he was saying so Jordan, his defense was that this is weak evidence because it's a mobile device. The mobile was then like lost after this event. So he was saying that like, anybody could have had his phone at that place and then disposed of the phone afterwards and he denied being involved. But he was held in custody. And then he tried to appeal the custody and said like he wants to be out of jail because his girlfriend, which is Kate, was at the time 17 weeks pregnant and had been recently diagnosed with ovarian cancer, which I don't believe Kate has ever spoken about that on her socials, but it must be true. Like I can't imagine he'd be telling the courts that if it wasn't true. But yeah, so he ap applied for bail from his custody and I believe it was denied. So yeah, this was all in August, 2020. And then also that same month, August, 2020, I'll just open up this next article. This is from the Daily Mail. The police raided his home. So Kate was living there at the time. He was in prison and the police raided his home and took three designer watches. And now, like just in the last few months, Kate and Jordan are suing the police and saying that the watches were seized unlawfully and that they actually belonged to Kate. So they can't seize the watches that belonged to Kate because they were seizing Jordan's property. I believe, that's my interpretation of this Daily Mail article. And the watches were valued at $410,000. So I don't think there's been an outcome of that yet. But yeah, this all happened in August 2020. So it was a very long time ago. Then I remember like he was in prison for a while. Kate had her baby not long after that. So yeah, at this in August 2020, she was like 17 weeks pregnant. She had her baby maybe six months later. And then I think he got out of prison at the end of last year and I believe that he wasn't actually convicted of anything from what I've read in different articles. I think it was just that he was in there awaiting trial and then there was like not enough evidence to hold him any longer and he got released on some sort of bail. And then she fell pregnant again. No, she's had another baby since then. So I think it must have been the end of 2022 that he got out. So it was about two years after this. So yeah, he got out and then she got pregnant again and they've since had a second baby. But yeah, this week he has gone to court again over something that was committed years ago. So what happened, this is the final bit of the story. So just recently he has been sentenced to 11 years in prison, which I mentioned earlier, for something that happened in June 2020. So all this stuff happened in like June, July, August 2020, and it's all just coming to light now. So he was, um, I guess spotted or like, I think there was a tracking device again. He was in a shipping yard and apparently him and his friend attempted. 
He's been convicted of attempting to get commercial quantities of cocaine out of a shipping container. They were not successful, but apparently the attempt to get that cocaine is enough to land him in prison. So yes, that is his tumultuous history. As I said, it all happened around June, July, 2020, June, July, August, 2020, but it's been obviously a very lengthy process. And yes, now he has been convicted to 11 years in jail and apparently it's five and a half years without bail. So he'll definitely be in there for five and a half years and then he'll be able to get bail after that. Oh gosh, sorry if that's confusing. I tried to make it as simple as possible, but it's a very crazy story. Okay, what are people saying? Roxy Jasenko is saying hi again. <laughs> hi, Roxy. She has been doing quite a few statements this week, actually, about her Roxy Jasenko boot camp. So the liquidators, I'll just touch on it now, just since I'm talking about Roxy, the liquidators have issued a statement to all of the ticket holders or members, I suppose, because it's not a lotto, it's a giveaway. So all of the members have received emails today from the liquidators saying that the Giveaway is still happening, but it will be happening in July rather than June. So they've delayed it by a month. Um, Roxy did previously say that she'll be personally refunding everybody. I think that her hands are a bit tied in that I don't know if she's got access to all of the database of like payment methods and all of the people who entered. So I'm not sure how she could refund them at this point. I know that she has said that she's gone to the Supreme Court and lodged like, you know, these liquidator stuff to get the company shut down because she doesn't want to she thinks that they've like you know said the wrong things to people and whatever but um yeah I think that it's far from over there's definitely more to come people have not got their refunds yet which is the biggest question and yeah I think Roxy's still maintaining that people will be refunded that is my understanding is Sophie Guigelin married again yes I believe well she is she got married earlier this year to I can't even remember his name anymore and he blocked me, so that's a bit annoying. But um, I don't believe she'd known him very long. It seems that she met him at a Fred Again concert. That's what I was told. It was either at the end of last year or the start of this year. And yeah, she's already married to him and apparently they got married in Vegas. That is what I have heard. But she hasn't spoken about it. She said she's not going to speak about it. And yeah, which is weird for Sophie because she does like to talk about everything, but... I guess this time she's going to keep her relationship quite private compared to previously. Sarah's day just upload, just updated us all about the gender reveal of her baby. Yes. So I've actually already posted this to subscribers. She did an eight minute story series, which could have been summarized in 20 seconds. So I'm going to summarize it in 20 seconds. So Sarah's day has said to people, stop telling me that I am dragging out this gender reveal for engagement because that is not true. The reason I haven't done the gender reveal is because I've been too busy living my life, being with my family and vlogging is my last priority. That is the summary. <laughs> so it is still coming. She's got the vlog ready. She just needs to film an outro with Kurt and then it will be ready for uploading. <laughs> People are very happy for Abby Chatfield and her hard launch with Adam Hyde from Peking Duck. Um, <laughs> it went quite viral this week that um, the news channels were, you know, announcing this new relationship and they were referring to Adam Hyde as Abby Chatfield's boyfriend because he spoke about his neck cancer. And I think that was where they were saying, you know, Abby Chatfield's boyfriend has revealed he has neck cancer, something like that. And people were laughing that that's how he's referred to now as her boyfriend rather than like one of the lead singers of Peking Duck or I guess he's one of the only singers, but yeah, um, Okay, I think that's a good thing. Why not? Like Abby Chatfield is very famous. Abby Chatfield gets the clicks on the articles. Like without her name on it, it probably wouldn't get as many clicks. That's just how the media works. <laughs> and yes, they do seem very happy. And there's been so many people commenting in the posts saying that they look like brother and sister. I think it's purely because they both have curly hair. <laughs> but a lot of couples do look like brothers and sisters. I think that that's quite common. Okay... Who was the influencer who had a 30th birthday party on the beach with a trumpet player? I don't know. Sorry. Not sure what that's about. Christian Hull, his business financial struggles. He's been very vulnerable, sharing so much important insight into small business. Yes, I've been really enjoying his updates this week. So Christian Hull has closed down his business. It's an online shop called Fuck Off Shop. And he just sells like heaps of like sexual crude humor sort of things like 
um, a hat, for example, that says fuck off, like, you know, random things like that. And he has said that he I think was charging. Just turn the charger on. Um, yeah, so he was saying that he used to have a really successful business years ago and he was it was in the news articles actually that he sold like five hundred thousand dollars of key rings in a day or something. It was something crazy. And he's now saying that he four years on is left with hundred and eighty thousand dollars of stock that he can't sell because it's like hard to sell stuff and he needs to shut down his business. So what he was doing was he was going live every night on Instagram at seven o'clock and doing like massive markdowns and things. And within like the first 24 hours, he sold something like $115,000 worth of things. So he's done really well with his closing down sale and everyone's been really supportive. But yeah, it's very sad that he has had to close down this business and that is a very big reality for a lot of businesses. Yeah, people are really liking what Lily did with the fashion on her holiday and it's refreshing to see and she still looked great. Totally agree. Oh, someone's saying hi to Kate, so she must have joined the live. Okay, my phone is still not charging. What's going on there? Okay, sorry, I didn't press the on button, I pressed the volume button. Yep, that's better. <laughs> Okay, what else have we got? Yeah, Karina's behavior was icky and stingy. Let's be real. let's be real. It was a photo shoot, and she did not want to pay to use a location. I'm not sure about that. Like, I get why that's easy to assume, but like, she does live there, sort of thing. Like, she lives in the area, and I think she just she genuinely wanted. She probably just wanted to take a photo shoot of her team out, just probably for socials and stuff. Like, I don't imagine it was for, like, paid purposes. I don't think it was, like, a fashion shoot that she was then going to use in a campaign or anything. What else have we got? Yeah, lots of people talking about the drug importation accusations, I suppose, for Jordan Brennan, Kate Zepp's baby daddy. But yeah, all up, I don't, I don't believe he's actually been convicted of anything until now. I think it's all just been like people he's mixing with and he's been in the wrong place at the wrong time, potentially. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's awful for her, for Kate, and it's awful for their children. But, you know, you do the crime, do the time. I guess that's how it works, isn't it? Huh. <sighs> There's lots of people asking if Kate's watching. I don't know if she's watching. I, yeah, don't know. Unless she comments, I'm not going to know. Did Kate have a boy or a girl? Uh, her first baby was a boy and her second baby was a girl. But she doesn't post on social media anymore. Like she's gone quiet the last few months, pretty much since Jordan got out of prison. So that's probably like over a year ago now. And yeah, I think that that's probably a good move in terms of like all this stuff that's going on with his court cases and stuff. Like you don't want to mess with like potential juries and things. So she's probably been told that she probably shouldn't be posting on social media, I imagine. And she's always been very protective of her children, which I think is great. She's never actually shown their faces on social media. Um, what else? Thoughts on Abby Chatfield's TikTok video with boyfriend's comments on her IUD. Um, I haven't actually seen the video, but I don't know. Like, I guess I can't really comment without having seen it. But um, I think that everything Abby does is very like, not over the top, but like out there and everything is to get a reaction. So I'm guessing that this video with him commenting on her IUD would be for that purpose. And I imagine it's very entertaining. Abby is very entertaining. She's very good at social media. Veruca posting about people commenting on her riding her horse in Bali. Okay, I don't know what people would have been commenting about that. I'll have to look into that one. Kate Zepp is from Ipswich. Yes, she is. Also one of my best friends lives in Ipswich, but she is not like Kate at all. <laughs> is Hannah Orville in the US to see her boyfriend who moved there to play NFL? 
Mm, that's another one I don't know. Sorry, I usually don't read out the questions that I don't know because it's a bit boring if I just keep saying, I don't know, I don't know. But I'm just sort of reading these out because then maybe people will send me the answers and things. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't even remember. Is she still going out with that Patrick Zerta or is that old news now? I can't remember. I don't hear much about Hannah anymore. Do we think team boy or girl for Sarah? I reckon it's another boy. And I think that I know that if I had a third child, I've got two girls and I think I would want a third girl. Like, I think that'd be really fun to have three of the same, but then also like, it'd be cool to have something different. I don't know. I don't, I think that Sarah has always said that she sees herself as a boy mum, and she's always expected to have another boy. But I think that if it was another girl, she'd be like much quicker to get the gender reveal up because everybody would be like extra excited for her for some reason. I mean, it's kind of a weird concept. Can we talk about what is happening to the children of Palestine and the influencers not speaking about the genocide? I did a huge talk on my live last week about that, probably for like six minutes. And then I had to shut myself up because I thought people don't come on here to listen to me talk about Palestine. But um, yeah, there are a lot of influencers talking about the genocide if you are following the right people, I suppose. Thoughts on Sophie Keisha selling her makeup company? Yeah, so I'm not sure if she's selling the make makeup company or if she has it having, oh my gosh, is she selling the makeup company or is she having a closing down sale? I'm not sure if I interpreted her post wrong, but yeah, I did mention it on my live last week that the Isuru Instagram had been deleted. It was still in her bio, but it was blacked out because there was no Instagram behind it. The website is still active when I last checked, but yeah, so it's all a bit confusing. I feel like ever since Mia Plastic left the business, I mean, she left it very early on, but ever since then, it's just been a sale brand. Like it's just the only thing I ever see about it is when it's on sale. I don't hear anything else about it. And they're always having like a clearance sale, but what are they clearing? Oh, and then they had a new product launch, which was some highlighters, but then they got recalled because they used coconut oil, which set hard. And it meant that the product wasn't very user-friendly. So yeah, I feel like it's just been plagued with bad luck after bad luck. And I think that it's a good move to either close it down or sell it because I feel her energy could be better spent on her bigger businesses that are much more successful. That was that Olivia girl that has the wedding content business. Huh. I don't know what that... That's my sister who's commented that. I don't know what that's relating to, but Olivia... What's her thing? Olivia and Living is her Instagram. And yeah, she does, she films wedding content for people on her iPhone, but it's like really creative and arty and like posh, I suppose. <laughs> Luxurious, I think she calls it. But yeah, I'm not sure what that's related to. Oh, the 30th birthday party. Yep. So she's the one who had the 30th birthday party on the beach with a saxophone player. Her 30th birthday party looked like a wedding. It looked incredible. <laughs> Riley Hempson running for Nike. How good. It's so sweet watching that journey and relates to so many people. That is really cool that she's running for Nike. She does so many big brand collaborations. Like this week she posted she's going to be in the Australian Harper's Bazaar this month. She, yeah, is collaborating, collaborating with Nike. She was collaborating with Pandora this week. Like she is doing the most. Anyone here watching Housewives of New Jersey? <laughs> They're trying to get me to watch it. Yeah, I do need to watch it. I just have the Kardashians that I watch. That is my favorite, favorite show of all time. And I need to watch the most recent episode, but we have no internet at the moment because my husband changed providers today and we have no internet for the long weekend. So I won't be watching anything this weekend. <laughs> Mitch Third and Talia Skeens beef today. Yes, so Talia Skeens said on her stories today that her court case is over and people were messaging me immediately like, what is this court case? <laughs> and back in 2022, Outspoken did an episode on it in about July, 2022. And so Talia had said on her YouTube channel that she was going through these legal battles with Mitch. And I believe off the top of my head, there's definitely news articles about it as well, that she was suing him for $170,000 that she contributed to their joint business when it started, which was called, 
Third Fix Collective or Third Fix Collection. So it was a clothing business and she funded that with 170 grand. And then when they broke up, he, Mitch, took on the website and the socials and everything and like locked her out. And she was saying, well, I want my $170,000 back. If this is yours, you need to give me back the money that I put in to start it up. I think that's what the court case was about. And then there were also like accusations. Like she was saying he reminds her of the Tinder swindler. And if you've seen that show, the Tinder swindler on Netflix, it's about a guy who basically lies about how much money he's got. And he like uses money from some people to like pay back other people and like fund this lifestyle. And it's all just a bit dodgy. That's what she said about him. Well, not necessarily about him, but she was just like implying it was about him. <laughs> Any updates on Emmy Lou's beauty product that she's hinting at? She showed the bottles not long back, appears to be a drop ship from China Bizzo. So she's had no input into formula or any real research. No, I have not heard any updates, but this was mentioned last week and I said I needed to look into it. But um, I don't imagine she'd be drop shipping beauty products from China. Like most Australian brands are made in Australia. Maybe she's just importing the packaging from China, which would make a lot of sense. What else have we got? Oh, this is about the Abbey Chatfield and Kelly Holiday or Adam Hyde video about the IUD. He was saying that he should pay for the IUD, IUD because he is the oh he is the one C something 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 in her. It was funny. Well, yeah, I mean that's probably true. Maybe men should pay for contraception because they're the one that benefits from it, aren't they? I mean, we benefit too, of course, but, you know, in a different way, I suppose. <laughs> um, is Sky Wheatley related to Adam Sullivan from Evidence-Based Training? I feel like I've missed the connection. <laughs> no, they are not related. They like to pretend they are because everybody says that they look like brother and sister and it's just a joke that they go along with. Do you post your girls on social media? I do have a private social media that is just very much private, like very much just people that I actually know in real life. And yes, I post them on there, but I also post them occasionally on my public TikTok, but yeah, very rarely. And I do post them occasionally on my subscriber content, but again, very rarely. What else? Gosh, there's a lot of comments tonight. Ruby Tuesday Matthews is going to Bali with her kids. I did not know that. That sounds like an absolute horrible experience. <laughs> Sorry, but I on I have two children and the idea of going to Bali with them, I probably couldn't think of much worse. And she has three children, so that would be really full on. But good on her, like good on her for giving it a go and traveling, she might love it. You have the most amazing memory. Yeah, I just have a real passion for influencers. I think that that's just like my thing in life. I think that's why I have a great memory. Thank you. Thoughts on So Dramatic's podcast where Olivia explains that she never shared Dominica's OnlyFans photos. Yeah, I did listen to that podcast. And a few years ago on Maths, there was this whole controversy where apparently Olivia shared photos from, from Dominica's OnlyFans amongst the cast members. And Olivia, to this day, she just did an interview this week and she still denies that she shared OnlyFans photos. She is saying that she shared photos advertising OnlyFans. So it was just like screenshots from Twitter and screenshots from Instagram saying, come and see my OnlyFans. And that there were just five photos and yeah, wasn't as bad as what maths portrayed apparently. And she's also saying that like, the photos happened and then the producers sort of didn't really do anything with it. And then two and a half weeks later, they decided they wanted to run it as a storyline and made them all have the conversations about it again. So I thought that was interesting. Gosh, sorry, this has been going on so long. Thank you if you're still hanging around. <laughs> Jazz Hand, she didn't know it was her cousin. It happened as well at my work. We hired a girl and her cousin worked for us and they had no idea each other existed. That's so weird. So apparently Jazz Hand has hired somebody and it turns out it's her cousin. 
That is such a weird story. I need to look into that one as well. <laughs> when I watched this back, because I put it up on YouTube, 